Hello. 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 Hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, good to see everyone. So, it's just the three of us. We know we promised you. I make no promises. Yeah. (laughs) No. So, Kenny had to work a second job. So, you know. I have to make money and Foxana isn't feeling well. So send some, send her some love. So she feels yeah. better mm-hmm. and we hope we'll have one or both of them on soon because I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready for you guys. <laughs> I have terrarium plants a plenty. <laughs> I am not ready. I'm relying on this terrarium stream. Whenever it does happen, I have it scheduled for next week. But again, no promises because it all depends on whether That's our terrarium are right. ready. You know, we but, need our friends to get better and to not have to work so hard. I don't know. I don't even know how to get started. Like, I yeah. don't know exactly what needs to go in the dirt. I don't know what plants I want to use. I don't know what light I need. So I am starting literally from the ground up. uh, We have a lot of work to do. That's right. Yeah. And for light, I mean, you can just use a a windowsill if you have a good. Yeah. I. You might not, though. I have a southern facing window that I could put it on, maybe. Yeah. Um, Can you grow house plants in your in that window? If you can grow house plants, I have pothos in that window. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of terrarium plants are pretty low light. So. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, um, I mean, I have light sources. I actually have this, it screws into a regular bulb base and it's a, it's a grow light and it's very oh, bright. I yeah. Like I mean, terrestrial plant lighting is a lot less fussy than aquatic plant lighting. Thank you, Eric. Eric, <laughs> thank you so much. Our number one. Plants. I just ordered a bunch of plants. Found yeah. some crypts I'd never heard of, so like I'll put those in the crypt tank. Spending all my money on terrarium plants. <laughs> I ordered a bunch from Amazon too, so I have a lot of terrarium plants. <laughs> I've never ordered a plant from Amazon, have you? Uh no, this will be my first. It's not it's from a a nursery that's in Ohio. They're just selling through Amazon. Oh, yeah, well, I can't imagine you got prime uh, live plants sitting in a warehouse. No, no, but they <laughs> did ship. I mean, I ordered them Saturday night, and they shipped out this morning. So, Good. and they'll come to me. They'll get to me right away. I mean, they're coming from Ohio. Nice. So it'll probably get here right away. And this is a good time of year to to uh, mail plants. Because the weather is mild, lots of places, and uh, yeah, the weather is great. You got to hope that uh, U- USPS is going to cooperate. You have trouble with that. I have I, not really, but every now and then something happens. So, like Bex uh, mailed me some plants. Um, they made it here fine, yeah. and I got something donated to Fish Fam Christmas that was mailed to me on Saturday uh, through Priority, and it got to me. Nice. So, but there's a plant pack that um, that Mike, All Things Fish, mailed to me early last week. You didn't get it? Not yet. It's, oh, uh, no! it's, in, that, it's in that limbo of uh, in transit arriving late, no delivery <sighs> date. Because I got mine. Day. I got mine, and it's it's in my tank. It looks really good. You notice that bright pink plant right there. That's one Ooh, of them. What is that? It's alternate there. I can't remember which one. Oh, is it the one that's oh, so that's called the, pain, the really butt. long one? Yeah. It's a pain in the butt plant. Is that what it's called? Find something, something. It's yeah. really bright pink. I don't know if it will stay that pink. My water is not, I don't have our our old water like Mike does, but I hope it does. It's quite pretty. I like alternate theras. They're they're slower growing than most stems. So yeah, and I'm good at alternate theras. My water is usually pretty pretty good with them. So look at you with your stem plants right now, though. I know. I have quite a few stems for me. This is not uh, not where I like being in life. <laughs> yeah, well, alternate there grows so slow. It grows really slow. So that one doesn't bother me. I used to have alternate there in the 90, but the um, Stichiopteris, Osolaris, Gobies are 
They're alternate. They're they're alternate. They're bullies. They just grasped yeah. it. Okay. Kind of like, kind of like a, a pleco would. They're just too. They're they have sucker mouths, and they just are too too um, too hard on it. Because they rasp my swords a little bit too. Not too bad. Not like a, not like a pleco would. But yeah, the alternate there, Reniki. I did not make it once I got those. I have this uh, red sword, or at least I bought it as a red sword over three years ago from my LFS. It is now two feet tall and taking up too much space in my 90, and I don't want it anymore, but I cannot bring myself to throw away a two foot tall. Oh, sword. no. I you know, if you did want to get rid of it, you should make it like a really special giveaway or something, or mm -hmm. give it to someone who, like, I don't know, has a giant tank and wants just mm -hmm. one giant plant. Yeah. And uploading that thing is going to be a pain too, because it's yeah. probably hard moves halfway through the 90. Well, I have transported it from my 40, and yeah, that it was a pain. And it's only been mm -hmm. in the 90 for a few months, so it hasn't quite taken over the tank yet. So I want to get it out of there before that happens. Also, also Mer, your, audio, your audio is a little fuzzy uh, on my end. Hmm. Is hey, we missed a super chat from B Wizzle. Thank you. Uh, uh -oh. Four ninety nine or five ninety nine to the moon. He said to the moon. Yeah, is he like one hey. away from seven hundred? I think I saw. Uh, a oh post. man, we gotta get you there, man. Ahmad, yeah. drop his con drop his info, please. We gotta get him there. I'm. If you're not subscribed, do it. Just do it. Do it, do it, do it. Right. I'm not even going to say like, oh, check out his content first. See if you like it. No, just just subscribe. Just Blindly do subscribe. You know, what, you know what? If you don't like it, you could unsubscribe later, but you'll like it. I think I can get the sword in Jenna's tank. I have to trim probably half the leaves. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, because the 55s are so narrow front to back. Yeah. So I saw my name in the chat. Zenny said something. What did you say, Zenny? Geek Boy says he's tossed many two foot tall swords. That sword keeps spewing out more and more. It's true. You have you have very vigorous swords. Zenny says, so does Kelly know who finally got her CO2 tank filled today? Good job, Zenny. Wow, you were you're all you're you're so close. Um, so has any gotten in all of her stuff? She got her regulator. She got oh, yeah. The regulator was the last thing to, well, technically the last thing is the actual CO2 because she had to get that filled. But Well, sure. Yeah, we can't. All the accessories that. came in Wednesday and Thursday. Nice. And the regulator came in Friday. Cool. She said, well, there's a cat in her tanks. So she's going to have to evict that cat. <laughs> Gingy the kitty. Meow, meow. Oh. Jenna reminding me I got to have the YouTube side open because I'm missing member milestone chats. Hang on. Oh, no. I don't have that open. Let's see. That's not going to happen. And I can't see them because the chat has moved them off. I'm sorry. That I is... wish StreamYard would get with the freaking program. I know. So the plants that I got from Bex today... Um, yeah, she did that? trimming on her um, her S repens, which I have S repens and it does well. It just it's kind of slow to carpet, so she sent me some of her trimming so I can just stick them in between the voids in the forty. Yeah, I don't use it as a carpet. I use it to make little bushes, like by rocks. I think it looks really good that way. I like the carpet, and. Yeah. Uh, she sent me some Ludwigia palustris because it's a nice, beautiful red color, and she did well. And then more of her grown-out uh, Rotala willichii that she got from Myrtle. Since I now have the bowl and I have distilled oh, water, yeah. and all I had left before I got that CO2 in the bowl was like maybe this much willichii. <laughs> so I'm off to a start. I've never successfully grown it. I've never had... Never had soft enough water, so, but I also, I mean, I don't really like the look of it that much, so I'm, the there, yeah, I mean, there are other stems that I guess I would want first. But. 
I don't know if I like it yet or not. I just we'll find uh, out. I, I mean, if it didn't grow for me, I have to double down on it, right? Because yeah, I refuse. Yeah, I, refuse I mean, I, I, I just, uh, I don't know. There's other plants. I move on. So Myrtle tagged me in an auction. Someone giving away like a hundred, <laughs> three hundred, something. I don't know. It was a ridiculous amount of lucky eye stems. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like, no. you might want to get this one. <laughs> Lady Diane's got to go back to lurking. But Glassbox Hero dropped a video of her angel babies. That's so cool, Diane. I'm so excited that you're going to be a mother of just Yay. so many angel babies. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. But you can auction them off at your club. People, lots of people will want them. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Di Lady Diane is way cooler than I am. That's just how that she's goes. Got, she's got some some good fishes and shrimps. Sure does. She's, I, don't, I don't know if I'll ever be that cool. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, Myrtle, what's going on with you? What do you think about um, that? I did some major trimming on my uh, 30 gallons. So, whatever you see over here above my head, almost all of my side is gone. It's a complete carpet now. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's. I had to make some room for all the crypts that I had that were growing and sh getting shaded out by plants. So I trimmed down all the stems, sent a few to uh, Zen and a few to Didi. Um, I, I kept some of the rare ones that I have, but most of the common fast spring stems I've completely gotten out. Yeah, that's does, cool. Does Myrtle sound better now? I actually did some behind the scenes button clicking on his audio settings. No, well, I mean- Still bad? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not listening through YouTube, so I guess I'm not a good person to evaluate. Oh, well, it was staticky, and now it's it shouldn't be. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Silver Creek said he does sound better. Okay. Oh, cool. good. That's good. All righty. Nice. Oh, and uh, some plants uh, from Myrtle to Zen. Did, oh, did she yay! Get in the Ooh. I sent them out today, yeah. so they haven't. Yeah, just sent them out today. And Zenny can grow them now because mm -hmm. she's gonna have CO two, and she can grow all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. She can exciting. grow basically the same stuff as us. Her KH is the yeah. same. Yeah, which is so many plants, so yeah. many. I mean, yeah, there are some plants I can't grow, but there's what like ninety percent I can, maybe more than ninety. There's so many plants that you can grow with this cage. So, yeah, that's awesome. Soon Zenny will be doing plant giveaways because she'll have so many. Mm -hmm. she just... She'll have to do a live stream in order to yep, do a plant <laughs> giveaway. Though. Oh, yeah, she will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In well, due time, when she's one, ready, if she's thing, ever ready, you know. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Yep. So, yeah, well, I've been revamping quite a bit. I mean, you can't really tell, but the Hold night. On. Uh, Scotty is so excited to get his bunnies this week. Scotty's getting bunnies? What? Uh, he's threatening to send him rabbits. I have a bunny, Scotty. Do you want it? I'll send it to you. I'll also send you some cats. Do you want some cats? Great. for He's allergic to cats, but... I Just guess. take some Claritin, Scotty. That's what Zyrtec is for. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm allergic to cats. And I... uh, Just take your Zyrtec. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you can outgrow allergies. When I was Scotty's age, I was allergic to cats. Very allergic. And um, when I met Jake, I was, let's see how old was I, 38. And I thought, oh, God, this is going to be tough. Like, he has cats. And I went to his house for the first time, and it's fine. So I outgrew that allergy. Fat Kitty, I don't know where he is, Annette. I think he's upstairs. <laughs> I mean, I could send him. I'll just, you'll open that box. And meow. So, how do you trim and plant the baby java ferns that pop up on the ends of the leaves? Just pull them off. Just pull them off the leaf. Yeah. And then you can, you can anchor them to substrate or rock just like you would a big java fern. I actually let uh, mine float around for a while. 
you can do let that. The, the rhizome is a little tiny or basically non-existent in the baby plants. And I just kind of let the, the rhizome grow out a little bit, the roots grow out a little bit more, and then I find a place for it. Also, so because I'm lazy. Nature. Yeah. And if you're getting a lot of little baby plantlets, it might be because your plant isn't as happy as it could be. Mm -hmm. Now you're not using CO2, so you're always going to get more. But if you all of a sudden see like tons more baby plantlets than usual, you might need a little more nutrients. Or, or you just let that thing keep producing baby plants in a, in a corner like I do. My son's sink has a java fern. It's been in there for three years, tucked in a corner, well away from the light. It produces baby plants all the time. And I take those babies out and I plant them in like CO2 tanks. And, and, and then it's it. big. Yeah. I actually don't like the look of when they get baby plants. So, uh -oh. but if you like it, you should do it. Well, the baby, I mean, the look of when they get baby plants is kind of weird, but it's also off in a corner. You can barely see it. Oh, in, uh, his tank. So and it's just a sad little producer back there. Your son, I have a feeling, does not care. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. So only Oscar says it's the Java fern that throws babies on the leaf. I have a lot of them. And then it jumped on me. Hang on. Now I know the name. There you go. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm doing lots of new things. My biggest thing is I ripped out my foreground of um, Monte Carlo because I just got tired of it completely. Yeah, it's gone. It's been gone. I gave it all the backs, the rest of it. Well, I had ripped out most of it and then I gave the last big chunk of it to backs. Um, I just got tired of it. It's it's a lot higher maintenance than like um, Eleocaris acicularis mini, which is mm -hmm. the dwarf hair grass, the mini, mini dwarf hair grass. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I don't know, just got tired of it. The thing is, if you don't trim it regularly, it will float up from the bottom because the bottom will die off and the top will be alive. And then it floats up. And once it flows up, floats up like that, you can try to weight it down and get it to reroot, but it won't work. Your only recourse is to rip it out, rip it into chunks and plant plugs of it again. And I just got tired of doing that. I mean, it's not as bad as like um, Hemianthus colotrichthoides HC. I think that, I can't remember what that's called. Is that like dwarf baby tears they call that or something? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it that that requires even more maintenance. But um, anyways, I got tired of it. So I planted it all in Marsalea. And you're going to ask me which one it is. Is it been, is it Hirsuta did I use or Cr Cronada. I can never remember which one's which. Honestly, they kind of look the same to me. They do. One is a little taller than the other, but I can never remember which one. But anyways, it's it must be the short one because it's about a half inch tall. Mm -hmm. And um, so it starts out as kind of looking like little four leaf clovers. But as it becomes more accustomed to aquatic life, it's mostly like I would say 85% one lobe and you can see it's filling in pretty good so Sweet. yeah i like that and it's so low maintenance you don't really need to do anything it's slower growing lower maintenance which is kind of nice for a 90 because bigger the tank the less i want to trim a huge foreground yeah if i have to trim the foreground on my 90 that's like getting wet up to my armpits yeah yeah i mean especially in the winter like i have to go upstairs and put a tank top on and you know yeah. it's, you know so i prefer not to scotty's question whenever i put api root tabs in a flower pot of gravel and a plant it leaves brown stain on the bottom of glass and sometimes clouds the water if I don't I know never, exactly what's in, what is in an API root tab, though. I don't either. I haven't heard good things about them, though. I don't. I recommend the Seacam brand personally. Uh, yep. Silver Creek it, said nitrogen stain. Huh. It happens with terrestrials as well. It's like the tannins sit the sit for so long in one spot and stain whatever it's touching. I don't know about that because, like, potassium nitrate is colorless in solution. So I don't know what staining it. it could be iron. It could be rust. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff yeah. in tabs. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know that I, I've never tried that brand, so I, I don't know that I would recommend it. I don't know that I'd recommend against it because I've never tried it. I do recommend the Seachem ones though, and if you buy them in the biggest package on Amazon, they're a decent value. So I think they have like a 60 pack or something, which will last quite a while. And the nice thing about the Seachem root tabs is they don't float up and they don't like disintegrate while you plant, while you stick them in. They're, they're much nicer to use. Yep. I, I just like the fact that they sink. <laughs> That's yeah. No air stuffed in them. So Heather would like to know, uh, she says, if I have two different tanks getting CO2 from the same bottle, but one starts bubbling like three hours after the other tank, they are on the same solenoid. What could be going on there? Do you have different diffusers in both tanks? Is the length of line longer for one of the tanks that you have? Is the tank deeper is another question. If there's a whole lot of depth, that I, the CO2 will have to push a lot of water out to get to the a diffuser so those three things could be happening in your tank yeah. your diffuser could also be dirty one of them could be more uh considerably dirtier than the other one which means you just have to dip it in hydro uh, hydrogen yeah. peroxide for a while and get all the gunk out of it but i would there. say if there's three hours you should also check for leaks so yeah, how i like yeah. to check for leaks is i take soapy water a bottle of soapy spray a spray bottle of it spray the line spray anywhere there are connections and look for fizzing or, you know like little soap Bubbling, bubbles yeah. yep. and that'll tell you there's a leak i might just go ahead and replace that line and the diffuser because it's cheap um but it should i don't care how far away it is and how high that tank is it should not take three hours it should take three minutes unless we're talking like a uh, teeny tiny diffuser on a really long line at like one bubble every four seconds or something like that. But still, like it should not take three hours. Like those Neo Nano diffusers, like they I don't take a long time. They take a long time. time. They require so much working pressure that I don't want to use them anymore. I'm looking to. I've never, I've never tried those. I've only used bigger diffusers. The the size of the ceramic ring is like. I don't know, like tinier than a dime. Like it's, oh, it's so tiny. I always use the ones that are like the size of maybe a 50 cent piece, even in smaller tanks. I don't think I would go below, let's say like nickel size. I would just turn it way down the bubbles per second. But yeah. I don't know, three hours. Mm. I would, re I would just replace the diffuser and the line because it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. um so scotty is asking again about the the stains is it, is it causing harm probably not i don't think so i just think that the next time you buy root tabs try the seachem ones use yeah. up what you've got because nobody likes to waste things but i next time you go to order them try the seachem ones i think you'll like them better i think everybody does mm -hmm. just try them all because they sink exactly and they don't fall apart and they're, if you buy enough of them at once, they're good value. Um, so June says, now that nitrates are being used by my plants, should I use FERTs? I have Easy Green. Yep. Yes. Start low. Ferts. Start just once a week. As directed as in the bottle. And then once you yeah. see that the plants are still eating that much of, then you start increasing the dose very slowly and give like two to three weeks in between each change in your dosing. Yeah, but if you're always testing zero nitrates, like your plants are hungry. They yeah. need nitrates. Even with your Oscars and your other fish pooping, your plants need nitrates. Mm -hmm. And so Heather says yes to all those. Uh, yes, as in like different diffusers, longer line. Oh. There's, yeah, I mean, there's some variance that goes on. Three hours is a long time. I would definitely check for leaks, but there's a lot of variables there. And, you know, a dirty diffuser can cause a lot of issues too. Hmm. Yeah. You just have to replace those every now and again. I mean, 
I would always buy at least two of them. So you can be cleaning one while you use a new one. Yeah. Soak them in bleach, then diluted bleach, and then soak them in dechlorinated dechlorinator. Like I'm uh, slowly getting to the point. Like I'm I'm replacing my diffusers with ones that have the replaceable ceramic rings. No fat kitty, no. No fat kitty. <laughs> No, fat, whatever you're doing, no. <laughs> the ferns. Oh no 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 no. That's no. no. Don't, don't do that. Nope. No. Fat. Oh, that's right. You have freaking terrestrial plants sitting right next to you. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> bad fat kitty. Bad fat kitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So I just got. Uh, for the only external diffuser I have, because my, my bigger tanks, I use the inline ones. I like those quite a bit. Um, it's this metal one, and it has little discs that screw in and out. And so I just replace the disc. Just throw it out. Because the discs are cheap. And, yeah, just get rid of them. Should I replace the solenoid on my CO2 canister after a while? Do they have a lifespan? I don't think so. I mean, is I mean, it I not guess if it's, it's mechanical, so everything mechanical has a lifespan. Yeah. But I don't I wouldn't like just replace it because it seems like it might wear out soon because of the lifespan. Like, I mean, you'll know when it doesn't work. Right. It won't close anymore. It's not like a yeah. heater where you're worried that it'll mm -hmm. stick in the on position. My guess, and I can't say this for certain, is if it fails, it will just not turn on. I've never had or, one fail. Or it will not shut off because if you're giving it a whole bunch oh, of uh, working pressure is really high and then the solar in time if it's not able to completely close and shut off it just might not close one day but yeah but if it's not acting weird right now your solar is probably yeah. i haven't heard that that's a real problem i haven't had to replace the one either so i mean it seems like if regulators fail it's because they have bad needle valves yes yeah and that's usually because they're cheap not very good needle valves and the quality control is low mm -hmm. So, not heard of solenoids going bad, but I'm sure someone's had one. You know, I broke a solenoid actually on a, because Jake knocked it over, and. Oh, the well, the solenoid broke. Is that no? Part of that? This, is, yeah, this is a long time ago. Oh, okay. he, he broke the solenoid, and mm -hmm. I just got a new one, and he put it on. So, I mean, Lady Diane. How do I stop this Christmas to? How do I stop this Christmas to stop blooming? Stop blooming. You don't like it blooming? Well, um, change the photo. This is the season. Yeah, this is the season. Fall is the season when most of Panagetes bloom. So yeah, it's just gonna happen. You cut the stalks off as they come up, maybe. Yeah, That's probably all you can do. And then it'll die back. And maybe it'll come back and maybe it won't. And maybe it'll skip years because I've had that happen where like just was too hot one summer and it didn't come back. Mm. So it's just kind of a nice surprise when they do. Gotcha. Oh, it's a DIY canister from F Zone with baking soda and citric mix CO2. Never mm -hmm. used it. Never. But my guess is, mm -hmm. yeah. I've never used it. I guess I can't comment at all. I have not. I don't know a lot of people have used it, so I can't tell you if they're a point of failure for them. The, the What I tend to do with most of the things I buy is use them until they don't work anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like my car. It's um, 12 years old. It's been through a flood, and um, oh, I still drive it. You're only in your car yeah. for a certain amount of the day. You don't need to buy an expensive, lavish one. So. I mean, I'm only yeah. in my car like once a month for like about 10 minutes. <laughs> I hate it. I only no drive. Like, cars last 12 years. Yeah. I drive like five miles a week. Well, maybe like Dude, eight. A 12 year old week. car, 60,000 miles on it right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's. Yeah, I drive like eight miles a week. So <laughs> I'm not exactly putting miles on. Where did he go? Keeping an eye on that cat. Uh, let's see. So Silver Creek says, in my jar, 
I'm going to do my garden soil mix I made, capped with pool filter sand, mixed with some super mineral rich red sand we got from Quartz Clean off from Arkansas. Can't recommend that. I don't. I don't know nothing. Yeah, from what I've been reading about um, terrariums, which we're hoping to get terrarium experts on here so they can tell you about good substrates. You need your substrate to be have a drainage layer. And you need to have adequate separation separation between the drainage layer and the substrate. And the substrate needs to be very well draining at the same time as having very good water retention. So you can't think of it as like you would be doing a, an aquarium. So are we talking like gravel or something underneath dirt you can use gravel yeah. you can use like leca like, like you can use um slate chips you can use full chem fluorite just anything that's pebbly mm. chunks of activated carbon because you're going to use carbon in a terrarium anyways or you might use well the terrarium you want to keep above that i don't want to give anything away i'm not a terrarium expert i haven't mm -hmm. actually made one i've just done a lot of this reading. unofficial advice wait till yeah. yep, all of us have just our yeah. speculation of what we've read so yeah long. but i but silver creek i would not suggest that i think that that's going to lead to unhappiness it's going to lead to lots of mold and poor growth so mm. well um fantastic freaks thank you for the three dollars super well, sticker thank you fantastic. and everybody watches stream afterwards mm -hmm. it goes at 10 after the hour yeah okay let's see we got any annette wants to see fat kitty let's see if i can get him yeah he was just there trying to eat plants Let's see. And he... Geek Boy says, I've run the same solenoid on my regulator for 12 years. No issue. That's what I was hoping for mine. Uh, I would not like, I, I don't like replacing things. I like buying new things that I don't have or haven't had before, but. 12 years is pretty good. Wow. There he is. Like, put me down. I want plants. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> okay. Fish Fam Christmas. Merry Fish Miss. Fish Fam Christmas. Where right. can get some Christmas moss? Fish Fam Christmas. Yeah. Sign up. Be a channel host if you yep. stream. Or, you know, maybe you just want to donate presents. Please subscribe to Fish Fam Christmas channel and go watch the latest video that we dropped. Uh, we worked hard on that video. Oh, that was so good. Annette like went through. Her husband. That was so good. Uh, Annette went through all of the live streams that were available for, for the giveaways and paired them, paired them down to the live streams that had like interesting moments. Then Jenna went through those live streams and paired those interesting moments down to about 13 minutes and then after i had 13 minutes of stuff i went down i went through all that paired it down to like five minutes added some unboxings to it so a uh, team effort you guys did the work that was a great little video kenny stopped by to say hi hi kenny kenny's off to his next job yeah. had just a quick break between them we hope we can have you on soon. It's all good. We have a lot to learn. Yeah, really. I got <laughs> questions. I need so much to learn. And I have to I have to make these terrariums before Fat Kitty eats all the plants. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we have to blame Kelly for bad advice when our jars fail. Ah, uh, you know, you yes. should blame me for all kinds of things, Keith <laughs> Boy. You should blame me if you decide you don't like the Chihiros, because I feel like I can start that trend. No. Jimmy I think I like it though. Says hello. Hi, Jimmy P. All right, question. Is there a good way to get aqua soil under a under gravel filter, or should I just pull everything out and restart the system? Mm -hmm. My plants are not a fan of the under gravel filter. 
Yeah. So I have used under gravel filters back when I was like eight. <laughs> it's been a while, guys. <laughs> um, back when you were eight? Yeah. You I know, can't even have... fathom that period of time. Because they, you didn't did exist. fish exist? Did fish exist? <laughs> yeah, we had under gravel filters when I was a kid. Um, I think that they're very difficult to grow plants with because the roots get tangled Stuck in, in the under gravel yeah. filter. And you do need to, every now and again, tear the tank apart, clean it up, take the under gravel filter out, clean it. Oof. It's, yeah. Um, I don't think there is a good way to get aqua soil under an under gravel filter, nor do I recommend it. Aqua soils are just not meant to be used with under gravel filters. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're happy with your under gravel filter, I would suggest if you want to grow plants, maybe doing little pots of aqua soil and growing plants in that. You could also grow plants immersed up the top of your tank like I like to do in my 90. That could give you a fun plant experience mm -hmm. or you could just change things up um you could get rid of the under gravel filter you could do a hang on the back a canister you could do sponges or a combination thereof but it's really not fun i would say to do plants in an under gravel filter they do filter things well and they're mechanically pretty fail safe there's but, basically uh, no component to them that's yeah, there's, it's driven by air so. yeah you're just putting two two or three yeah. air lines i mean we did it when i was a kid they worked haven't tried they do work i i have a, a set i i used in a 30 a 33 long i just had the whole tank filled and then on both ends i had tubes lifting up it, it works they but... they, and they bubble they kind of have a nice pleasant bubbling sound yeah you know that that sound kind of takes me back. We didn't get hang on the backs until I was in high school. I don't think we always had under under gravel filters on everything. So and that would have been in the '90s. So this would have been in the '80s. We used under gravel filters. Wow. If you want to supercharge an under gravel filter, you can put a power head instead of air air lines. And <laughs> oh yeah. That's like the power head I've got on the aquarium oh. co-op sponge filter. I don't. I didn't see a way that you can adjust the flow on the aquarium co-op power head. And that thing is powerful. Is it powerful? That's good to know. Cause, um, you know, it's not too big and you can put it in a big tank and still generate enough flow for the whole thing. Yeah. I have it in the 40 gallon plant farm now in the far right corner. Cause then on the left side, I have just an aqua clear 50 in there. Not and enough. now I've got flow on both sides and I have, I now have the CO2 diffuser where the power head is because it's nice. way more powerful. Plants like flow. Yeah, they do. They like flow. Not every fish likes a ton of flow, but plants really do. I got rainbows uh, in, the in there. Bottle right? of CO2 for a 180. Do all the parts come with instructions for newbies? Sadly, the instruction no. manuals are not that good. No, they I are would, not. If you get them at all. I would say to get the biggest bottle you can. I mean, you can use a five pound, gallon, pound. but you're going to be refilling it all the time. So I would go with at least a 10. If you have room for a 20, you could do a 20. I mean, you have a 20 on something, don't you, Steve? I have a 20 on my 90. And um, I don't know that I have room for a 20. So I It don't. lasts a while. Um, yeah. for, if I had a 180, I would absolutely do a 20 pound. It's, it's mm -hmm. a better value also. to. Go I would also... Different look into getting if it has a canister filter i or something where you can put a reactor in i would look into a reactor like try to for sure be yeah. as efficient as you the can. diffuser is not going to be very efficient in the one no one. even an inline one i mean an inline one like i have one of my 90 and that's fine mm -hmm. much bigger than that let's say much bigger than like 100 and 120 gallons I think you pretty much have to use a reactor from what I've read. I've never had a tank that big, so I can't say for certain. I have a DIY reactor on my 90 and it was a, it was a good decision. It's bulky and it makes it really difficult to pull out my FX six when it's time to do maintenance, but I still, it was, a, it was a good decision to do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I have backup bottles, so I have three bottles for two CO2 reactors going because 
you know, they're not open on weekends. So it's mm -hmm. nice to have, you know, it's nice to have a backup. Um, and I have two fives and a 10 and I wish I had all 10s or all 20s if I had room, you know, I think Gary Lang has like a 50 or a hundred that he stole from the lab he was working at. <laughs> So, and that would be, he uses that for his entire fish room. Nice to have connections there. I used to steal things from the lab all the time too. And now that I don't work in a lab, I have, I have no good connections anymore. <laughs> Sadly, no connections through what I do now. So. Um, oh, that's right. So on my uh, 2000 sub giveaway on Wednesday night on Steamy McStreamy, Bunny Viper won the $100 Dan's Fish gift certificate and she is donating it back to fish fam christmas wow and oh, that's i already nice, bought it uh ivy and so all i gotta do is i'm just gonna transfer it to fish fam christmas we went ahead and made a dan's fish account with fish fam christmas so we can store all the gift cards there yeah, that's nice and then we'll just send them to the to the winners whenever they are announced that was so nice of you bunny it was so nice. yeah very much appreciated so much love in this family and so much spirit of generosity and it's just it's awesome so thank you there's a lot of good prizes on that list mm -hmm. if you're not if you're not excited about fish fam christmas i don't know are you dead inside like, i would excite you if you're not excited about that you're yeah. unbelievable that's right I don't know. What does it take to make you happy? I'm happy. I'm excited. So Kenny says, I will teach you all grasshoppers. I'll have Better. a great stream. Have a great stream off to work. Bye, Kenny. And yes, we're very excited. Yeah. We're excited for Fox Ann too. We'll make this happen, people. We've all got our jars and we are ready to make terrariums. So what are my thoughts or everyone's thoughts because i don't i utilizing oh, urea pellets for granular granular urea in the subject uh, i mean was so I wasn't there, there was a little trend i wouldn't say trend there was a whole thing i don't know 10 15 years ago of people using urea um i have used urea in the lab it is only is terribly soluble. I mean, it is soluble, but it's not like it takes a while for it to dissolve. If I remember, well, I think that might be the point. Instead of having to fertilize time. on a regular basis, just kind of have yeah. it in there, at least like leaching into the water. I, I mean, would be afraid of controlling the amount in the water. Yeah, right? yeah I mean, you want a very thick not, substrate or very. Yeah. It's not toxic. It's small amounts. If you have a very very heavily planted tank, which you do. It's going to use up any of the urea in the water column rather quickly. I would not recommend it for someone who didn't know what they were doing, but that is not you, Mike. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to remember. I think Tom Barr might have some articles on it. I never tried it though, even though I had like a, I don't know, a 50 pound drum of urea in the lab just i don't know it just didn't seem worth it <laughs> when it's so easy to use potassium nitrate so uh i cannot sorry i can't tell you more than that i would not recommend any rando off the street try it because they don't know what they're doing but if you want to do it you could do it you're not just any rando off the street. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Diane says, I Thank love you guys. Came all the way upstairs to say so. Lady Diane, I love you. You're awesome. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Lady Diane. My uh, orange Venezuelan Cory's doing fantastic. Those are an awesome species of Cory. Mm -hmm. Very active. All good things Fun come from you. Lady Diane. She gave me, she got me some amazing rainbows that come from gary lang's line so she's awesome oh geek says you are already on the hook for any issues he has on the two sinks with heroes <laughs> making me jealous with these heroes lights i you know 
I was just thinking about this 90. I have three Fluval 3.0s on it, and I'm still not happy with how much light is getting into it. I have two more three-foot long Fluval 3.0s, and I'm like, should I put those on it? I'm not <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> and, and I'm <laughs> like, at this point, it's like, this is why, like, if you have a deep tank, a Chihiros is a much better value than a Fluval 3.0. If you have a big tank, Chihiros is a better value than Fluval 3.0s. You get so much more bang for your buck. They're wider. They have more front-to-back coverage. They're brighter, so you can get much more light penetrance in the water column. Um, but, you know, I already have all these damn Fluval 3.0s. It's hard to justify... Buying another light we already have. Some yeah, I mean, it's just... It all. Not good for the environment. I don't know. It's it's a lot of money. But if I were to do it all again, instead of buying three Fluval 3.0s for this, maybe one Chihiros would be good enough. Especially if I had it either on legs or hanging from a hanging from bars like I do with my small tank. So with your three Fluvals on the uh, 90, how long is your peak? Do you have it go at 100%? at some point in the day yeah i do i have it going at 100 percent. i have a ramp for how long hour. is it is, is that at 100 10 hours 10, 10 hours. hours at 100 yep well i mean i think there's a ramp up of like an hour and a ramp down of an hour so eight hours at peak eight hours at peak Got and it. i mean i never get any algae in that tank the other two tanks do get algae but with this tank nothing and i i just it feels like a medium. I mean, I've never tested par on it. I don't have a par meter. And it just feels kind of like a medium light tank. Even with three of them. So, yeah. I mean, how many Fluvals am I going to put on there? I don't know. Maybe I should put two more on. I have, there's the three foot one. You don't need a lid anymore. You can just yeah, take I the mean, lid off. Yeah, <laughs> my, my tank doesn't have lids. My tank is covered with lights from front to oh, back. Right. <laughs> That's how <laughs> like, yep, That's I don't true. need lights. And, and then you have lids. better light penetrance too with the lid gone. That's true. <laughs> then I would have better. I mean, I, I have to have some kind of lid. I have rainbows. I actually prefer a lid though because I don't like the evaporation without a lid. So uh, I just prefer lids. I know a lot of people don't, but I like them. Even on my even on my fancy fancy, which I'll show you when it's looking good. Just knock my phone over. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Fancy skate. It's looking pretty good. That's bright as hell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, there's a lot of light loss because I don't have the what are they Reflectors. called? The shield. Yeah, the shield on there. Oh, but, yeah. Next got the shield for hers, and it made a huge difference. I'm getting so much light in there anyways. It doesn't matter. It's hanging about, I don't know, 10 inches high. There's a lid. I still only have it at, I think I have it at 40 or 50%. I might turn it down anyways because there is algae in that tank. So it's just, super, it's just really bright. So... I don't know much about Severums other than the fact that either. they don't like plants. I would try it, though. It's just a pothos. Mm -hmm. Just try it. I yeah, mean, what happens if the roots get eaten? They just sprout more roots. Yeah, it doesn't. I would try it. He needs to go into a different tank. You adopted him, and he destroyed your plant plans for the 180. That's so uncool. So uncool. That's really ungrateful of him, too. You know yeah. what you could try? The most vigorous plant I know, and it is not legal in your state, so I'm not officially giving you this recommendation. Mm -hmm. That is Hygrophila polysperma sunset. I do know people <clears throat> on the stream, I'm not saying who, who have this plant. It is so vigorous that even with low light, crazy high KH water, and, and a tank full of Mambuna cichlids, it will still grow could try that it's just not very sunsetty if you don't have higher enough high enough light this one was sunsetty but and it's so light... pink in under my fluvals in the shorter tanks it was so pink 
It was crazy high nitrates. It was and lights were not good back then, and these were cheap lights. And the uh, the KH was sky high, and it was still super pink and pretty. It looked great. So, so it's not light that makes uh, sunset pink. It's the maturity of the stem itself. If you cut off a stem and then plant it, it's going to lose some of its pinkness for a while. But then, as soon as it matures, it's going to get back to its pink. Deep. Yeah, and he okay. would let it just kind of float around and do whatever. Yeah, so there were long stems mine. and they were pretty and pink, and it looked awesome. Yep, I ripped all of mine out because it started growing so fast. It's it, it's all on its way to some people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I do not say who. I don't have any. I no. allegedly, it's certainly not available on my plant form for members. No, but the thing is, is like I know that Bunny Viper would not do anything dumb with it. Like she wouldn't be like, "Oh, I think I'm going to take it to this lake and throw it out there." No, she would not yep. do that because she is a sensible woman. Distribute it to your local waterways. Right. <laughs> but you could try that plant, and as for your pothos, I just. The pothos. Yeah. So Mike says if I was going to run an under gravel filter, I'd run it reverse flow with a power head and sponge pre filter. Okay. I'm I am not going to run an under gravel filter. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, dad just did his run by air. I wasn't really sure how it worked because I was like eight. I'm not entirely sure how things work at my current age. And earlier, <laughs> um, Earlier, Geek said that he never had any problems with his undergravel filter until he put a power head on it. Oh, interesting. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, there's definitely such thing as too much flow through uh, media. Yeah, we tried to grow plants back in the 80s, but, you know, we just had those big tube fluorescents. They just weren't that bright. It just wasn't enough light. We were never successful, but we did try. We didn't have any sunlight on that tank, so it just didn't happen. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, people harassing Zen during the stream. Aww. Leave the poor woman alone. It's terrifying. You just come up as a guest on this stream. You'll have the comfort of Myrtle's presence. <laughs> Baby steps. That's right. Uh, let's see, Didi, I still can't wrap my head around the reactor thing. Basically, with the reactor is it you're trying to keep that CO2 in water and not exposed to air for as long as possible. So, so it's just a tube with uh, things to block the CO2 from going up, and then the water is coming in the reverse direction. So mm -hmm. it's pushing the CO2 down as the CO2 is trying to come up. And as the CO2 is coming up, the water is dissolving the CO2 until the bubble is completely dissolved. Yep. That's all it is. Passively, it just passively dissolves the CO2 from the headspace of the reactor into the water column. And the water is always flowing in and out. So it dissolves in as high of a rate as you can go. Yep. Mine on the FX6 is gigantic, like a big old saxophone. And... <laughs> Like at the top of the saxophone, the CO2 comes in and the water comes down and up through the, yeah. It's it's just a big, it's also very th like thick circumference because of the high flow. And it also makes it really, 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 really annoying to bleed air whenever I do maintenance on the canister filter. Mm. I think what I might do if I had a bigger tank and what I probably will do when I upgrade, because I, I really like inline diffusers because I like the bubbles. I think that I'll just put a manifold on and just run two lines and just and have two inline refusers. Mm -hmm. So I like the bubbles. I like the bubbles. Mm, they're okay. Except mm -hmm. for when you try to take a picture of the tank because that. And it's like it, it, when you have those fine like needle leaf plants like the uh, like mermaid weed or mm -hmm. the, some of those limnophilas, the bubbles get trapped in it. It kind of it doesn't look good. It, it looks I like, like the 
the way the bubbles look though. Okay. I'm pro bubble. You're not gonna not gonna change me on this. On the plants though, I don't know. Yeah, on the plants, bubble. if it's a purling bubble, if it's a CO2 stuck to the plant bubble, that's different. But a purling no, bubble is I'm, much I'm, prettier than a CO2. Exactly, CO2 bubbles trapped between the the leaves. It just looks nasty to me. I'm just pro bubble. I like all bubbles. <laughs> I, I like them. So and Tom Bar, Tom Bar claims that he has support for misting being superior to dissolved CO2 in reactors because it delivers it directly a bubble. Really? I've read that, yeah. To that the plant sense. and that they can use it in gas form and not dissolve in the water column. So he says that you will get better growth if you missed it. No, I don't know that that's true for every plant. I don't think it matters for most, especially easy plants. I don't think it matters. But I like the bubbles. Hey, we're a week behind in chat. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> Tips Bringing for out the color of color booths. Booths. Highlight, CO2, EI dosing, only green leaves. I depend on what kind of booth you have. Maybe I we'll like have the issue there. What you want to do, the ones that they're, they call like blue, blue, air quotes, blue. You want to put those in the shadiest of all shady spots in your tank mm. for a while. It'll get dark. You'll start to see the blue coloration come out. Then you can kind of put it on display uh, in the light, but it's gonna it's gonna Ooh, turn green again. I, I mean, that's the one thing that kind of pisses me off about the way Boost is named. It looks good without all the marketing to me. Like yeah. you don't need all that. <sighs> So if so you've got like Eros, like Eros light has a boost setting. Yeah, you can fake and that, it. <laughs> and that and that setting is is very bluish mm -hmm. tone. And I don't really care about boost. I have some boost in that tank, but I like the way it looks because it looks bluer and I like blue. So I don't I don't like the reddish setting. I think the fish look weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, don't like red. It eats their own. It depends. Yeah, but the nice thing is you can try different things, and you can just pick the one you like. Actually, the boost setting is it has a very green light. It's very green, which kind of makes the boost look a little pearlier, or like not like pearly pearling, but like pearlescent. So. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just curious on the urea thing. No, some forms of nitrogen are much easier for plants to uptake and utilize in something like nitrate. Yeah. Or just, you can, I mean, you also use pure ammonia. They like that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of fertilizer for terrestrial plants has urea in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think plants have a preference for what they uptake. Oh, I think they, they like ammonia a lot, but I don't think it matters. I mean they'll they'll take up what's there um mine is the rex griggs big shrimp and you can look that up r-e-x-g-r-i-g-g-s i think yep two g's yeah yeah he was there's different variations on the design but it's all the same principle just yeah. the more powerful your canister filter is the bigger you want to go in in the length and the circumference of the uh of the pipe I don't know what happened to Rex Griggs. He was on all the forums way back in the day. He was a salty, salty man. He was. Well, that's what happened to him. He got burnt out. He was not the most pleasant of human being, but he used to sell reactors that he would build. And they had a really good reputation for being high quality. But and he also sold dry furts, but I never gave him any money because it was kind of salty. Because he was a dick. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, not being a dick can go a long way with Just like building rather, goodwill with your customer base. Kind of rather give money to people who are nice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, if Myrtle were selling reactors, I'd, I'd give money <laughs> to <them. laughs> uh, Let me go. Bex and Geek talking about how the Chihiros is worth it, blah, 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 blah. Hey, blah, blah, his blah, birthday blah, blah. is coming up November 21st, and all she wants for her birthday is a Chihiros light for me to have. You know what? 
if you if you buy a bowling ball named Homer for your wife on her birthday, I will be so angry at you, Stephen. Oh, you wait till Christmas. Haven't you seen that episode of The Simpsons where Homer, Homer buys Marge for like their anniversary or something, a bowling ball, and it says Homer on it, and the fingers are like drilled for his fingers and not hers, and it's way too yeah. heavy. And so she goes off and she's like, No, I'm gonna take bowling lessons. And like she's like a torrid affair with like the bowling instructor. And I can't remember who plays the bowling instructor, but so anytime like a partner has ever tried to give me a shitty gift, I'm like, oh, it's a bowling ball named Homer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this one's for you. Would keeping the lid on a very small terrarium help keep the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels up since they are retained within the same system? I mean, here's the thing. Plants will produce oxygen and they'll produce carbon dioxide. They both metabolize carbon dioxide and they, they respirate. Yeah, they respirate. So what happens is carbon gets fixed from the air, from CO2, and that gets fixed into glucose. And then glucose gets oxidatively respired to yield ATP, which the plant uses as energy, just like we do. You eat glucose, you turn it into ATP, you exhale CO2. So plants are using that. So it really doesn't matter. The point of sealing your terrarium up is to seal in moisture because humidity is the point of the terrarium. A lot of like ferns, they really like constant humidity and that is hard for us to have in our homes especially in the winter because we heat our homes and they get really dry and if like you live where Bex does it's super dry there year round so you're going to have a lot more success with a terrarium than you would just trying to grow a fern in your house i don't think you could grow ferns at Bex's house for a house plant i mean she would have to miss them every day because it's so dry there but in a terrarium, it seals all the moisture in, and so you don't have to water them at all. If you have a really great seal, I mean, there's this guy in rural England who has this, you may be seeing pictures of him on the internet. He's adorable. He's like in his 80s or something. He has this huge terrarium. Sure, he hasn't opened it since the 70s. Wow. Right. It's, and that's it's because, almost full of plants, too. Yeah, so, and yeah, because the water, so what happens is that it gets taken up by the roots and then it transpires through the leaves and then it condenses on the glass walls and then it rains on down. So that's the point of the terrarium is moisture conservation. Dang. Yeah. Hmm. I've never kept an aerial colon because I have hard water. I've been told there is some that will tolerate harder water, but I did not know that. Until Hopefully the one that he sent colon. me will. Because that's where I've got it in my seven gauge. I did not know water. that because I I thought all aerial Collins were soft water only. So I learned something. So I can't yeah. give you advice on anything with aerial Collins. So the one that Stephen has, uh, Malayator, and then another one, Feather Duster, both of them are going to be fine in hard water. And what's interesting is they're both fine leaf aerial Collins, and then the broader leaf aerial Collins don't do well in uh, hard water. Yeah, you would think that. Would be I don't bad. know which. I don't know if that one's gonna do well in hard water, but I think Luke has soft water because he's in the Pacific. Luke has West. super soft water. Yeah. So it's yeah. a super got soft party. Alpha tap should do well. Zenger got a prism. Nice. Yeah, I don't know that. anything about the prism. Who makes the prism? Uh, I know they're sold by Nylock G. That might be. I think it's okay his own light i think okay. okay i think i'm not sure but i think it's his own light. the only other person that i've seen run those uh so mike's got them but also chubbs when he was around he had a he had a planet tank no co2 lots of nice beautiful red plants in there and it looked really nice those are some hardcore lights like they have active cooling fans in them so you know oh, wow. they're right as hell the only the thing that they're about that's sick <laughs> The only thing I would say, um, Zenny, this is a 40, right? Yeah. So 40 is what, 18 inches front to back? Mm -hmm. See, um, 
want to make sure you get coverage with it. So I don't know how wide this light fixture is, but you want to get it up on legs or they're, as wide as, they're like the Chihiros, I think. They're pretty okay. wide. They have a nice oh, cluster of LEDs in yeah. them. Yeah. So make sure you use it on legs. Um, because you, otherwise you're not gonna get front, you're not gonna get the the beam of light is a cone shape. And if you want that cone to reach the bottom of your tank. Um, you got to get that light elevated a little bit. And if it's you're not happy with it, you might either need to get a second fixture or you might need to get it even higher by hanging it. So, but I don't know anything about those lights. I, I, I hope you'll tell us. I would like to know. That's awesome. You're well on your way. You got all, you're getting all the stuff. Just got to mm -hmm. evict the cat from the tank. Never. So Mike's asking space considerations aside, do you think a powerful surge, I think surges, I don't know, reactor is worth the money over a $20 Rex Griggs? Never use the powered one. I don't know what a surges reactor is. It's powered. Interesting. Uh, I'd have to look into it. The only reactor I ever tried was one I bought from, uh, what's it called? GLA. And I accidentally bought the wrong fitting for my filter, the wrong hose. Mm. Jake tried to get it to work and it leaked. Damn. And we cannot be having that. Nope. So um, I abandoned it to get the mister. But that's okay because you know what? I like the bubbles, as I've mentioned. <laughs> so, so I don't know. But I hope, you know, if you get it, Mike, I hope you tell us because I'd like to know what you think about it. Next for the fish setting, and I don't like it, but that's okay because I think the fish also look kind of fake in it, like they look too red. I've seen the fish setting on hers; it's it's very cool. Like, I know I've seen it on mine, and I don't like it. Well, I guess that's, that's okay. There's a lot of settings on it. There are a lot of settings, and I actually right now I'm just using the the custom hundred percent all, and I just slide them all down because I like the way that looks. So, but you can use what you want and you can change it for every scape. And you could change it. It would be hard to change it every day. You'd have to redo the settings and that would be annoying. But you can change it, which is a nice thing about that lamp. Big shrimp and no, sir. I was never more than 15 minutes behind. I was checking them timestamps. All right. <laughs> but now I'm catching up. I'm only eight minutes behind and I'm seeing that Austin will, in a couple of minutes will be talking about fresh to salt acclimation. Oh. Our bracket. Cool. Oh, wow. That's cool. So Beck says the shield protects her eyes from that light, which I agree. If I had this like, like mm. in my bedroom or by my TV, I would get the shield because it is a lot of light, stray light coming out. But it's in my dining room and it doesn't really bother. But if it were somewhere else, it would bother me. And last, I'm down at the bottom of the chat. Zender said, I also said, screw it. Ended up buying two of the 10 liter bags of Contrasil, not one. It's better to have more. It is. Mm -hmm. You'll never regret it, but you will regret too thin of a substrate. Yes. Every time I've made that, because I like to slope front to back. Eat, and if I'm doing like a scape scape, like in my 20, it's a severe slope. Mm -hmm. But I always regret when I make that front too narrow, too thin. I always regret it because it's a pain in the butt to plant. So I would not go below three inches of substrate. Yeah, that's what I was telling her too. Like three two inches at its lowest point. Two yep, and I look, at a yep, I look at a tank and if my index finger doesn't go all the way into the front of the substrate, it's not deep enough. Especially Three, if three knuckles deep. Yep, especially if it's aqua, <laughs> especially if it's aqua soil. Yeah. yeah, that's just like. Yeah, mm -hmm. I liked the new Fluval Stratum. I tried it um, at that aquascaping competition. Bio stratum. Yeah, I can't tell you what it performs like long term, obviously, because I didn't keep it going. But uh, the grain size, I think, is a little smaller, and it yep. seemed like the plants held a little better. So I liked it, mm -hmm. but nice. I don't know what it's like to. Have you tried any of it long-term yet, Stephen? Uh, 
I don't think I have any of it. I don't think I brought any of it home. Uh, we put it, we put it in our scape uh, in Dallas, and so uh, no, no, I maybe if we pulled some of it out and mixed it in new bags or something. Maybe one of us has it, but I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure it's fine though. Yeah, I took took uh, just. All that. right. Well, uh, Austin is going, or he's about to in a minute. So. Oh God, where did the time go? It's already. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Indeed. Well, so, thank you, everyone. Thanks Especially. for all the questions, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And, questions uh, get well soon, Roxanne. I love you. Get mm -hmm. well soon. We're thinking about you. So, and Kenny, like, man, work, work sucks. I get it. Yep. Second job suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you got to do what you got to do. We we'll get yep. it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But all thank right. you, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Mods you. and Lurkers replay crew. If we missed a question or you got a question after the stream, leave it in the comments. We will check. We will answer. Yeah. And thank you, Super Chatters. So. Indeed. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.